Without their support, President Maduro could quickly lose his grip on power. The military parade was held to commemorate Independence Day. But it also highlighted that most in the armed forces still seem to back Venezuela's embattled president. Maduro used the festivities to address the opposition, saying dialogue is the way to end Venezuela's political crisis. Stop with the conspiracies. Stop with the plots. Stop with the evil. Stop with the plans to destabilize and harm Venezuela. Venezuela wants peace and work, and that's why I repeat my call for national dialogue. Meanwhile, opposition leader Juan Guaido was sending a defiant message with his own rally. Guaido already ruled out further dialogue with Maduro's government earlier this week. He cited recent UN reports implicating Venezuela's security apparatus in thousands of extrajudicial killings, as well as torture and other rights violations. The UN said it clearly. Venezuela now lives in a dictatorship. But let the world see that too. We have not surrendered, nor are we going to surrender to any dictatorship. We are going to continue in the streets. But as the fight for control of Venezuela drags on, millions are caught in the middle. The political turmoil is accompanied by an economic crisis that's left people short of basic goods and desperate for change. We're joined now by DW journalist Johan Ramirez, who's reported extensively on Venezuela. Johan, we just saw in that report uh, Maduro talking about the possibility of of talks with the opposition, which the opposition rejects. Um, do we see the opposition and uh, the leadership coming together for talks anytime soon? Yeah, this is the, the never-ending story in Venezuela. We have two completely different versions. On one side, Maduro is saying, yes, this week we're going to have a second round of talks. And the, on the other hand, we have Guaido saying, no way, we're not going to talk with the dictatorship. Uh, so what is going to happen, we will see it in the, in the days to come. But what I think is that maybe this uh, kind of talks in Norway could be maybe the last chance for Venezuela to get peacefully out of this crisis. I mean, we have seen months of, of protests in the streets. We have a huge international pressure. We have U.S. sanctions. We have a lot of things that Maduro is still there mm. and sometimes is stronger and stronger. So uh, what is the way to get out of this? this? Guaido has been calling for months the army to step aside, aside from Maduro and to oust to Maduro. So it's like we are wishing a military coup that would be catastrophic for Venezuela, for the region. So maybe Norway is the last chance to, to get out peacefully. It's a strange situation. I mean, it's been months, obviously, since Juan Guaido declared himself the inter interim president. But he's still not in power, even as we speak now. Why not? And will it ever happen? Yeah, the, the answer, we saw it yesterday. Guaido were, went out to the streets with the people, and Maduro had a military uh, parade. So uh, the answer is because Mad Guaido doesn't have, not yet, uh, the military uh, support. But uh, the message was clear yesterday. I mean, Maduro is going through a catastrophic situation, 130,000% of inflation, mm. uh, according to to. to his own uh, numbers. Incredible. Uh, yeah. Um, by the end of the year, according to the International Monetary Fund, we're going to have 10 million percent of inflation and 43 percent of unemployment. So it's going to be catastrophic, but he's still there. Why? Because he has the weapons. And yesterday, this military parade was the message. I mean, uh, well, he's certainly still there for now. But as you know, this week, the UN presented a report that accused President Maduro's security forces of torture and extrajudicial killings in 2018. Do you think this report, this report will have any impact on Venezuela? I think it will have in Venezuela. It, it gives a new key element to Guaido's speech. I mean, he is not just the opposition or the National Assembly who is denouncing this. It's a huge institution, international institution, United Nations, who is uh, saying, OK, look, we have torture in Venezuela. They are denouncing hundreds of arbitrary detentions, almost 7,000 extrajudicial uh, killings mm. since 2018. There, these are numbers that 
when we see this number, we think about the dictatorships that led Latin America in the 70s and 80s. So it gives uh, Guaido new strength, but we cannot forget that the situation in Venezuela hasn't changed. One can say yes, but yesterday there were less people in the streets supporting Guaido. Yeah, of course, because uh, the situation hasn't changed. So the priorities of people is not honestly democracy and free elections or freedom for political prisoners. It's every single day finding something to eat and something, some medic medicines. Johan Ramirez, thank you so much for that. Thank you.